Pia Sinroy with Entertainment Weekly at Comic Con 2018. We are with the cast of Project Blue Book. Mm -hmm. Hi, everyone. Hi there. How are you guys doing? Doing very well. Thank yeah, you. Comic Con going well. Great so far. Any good costumes that you've seen? We <laughs> haven't seen anything. We've oh. just been ushered You've just been ushered through. Meetings. Room to room. We were, okay. we were looking down we at the Bible bashers downstairs. There's some oh, interesting my things. Ouch. That's not fun. Yeah. I saw a lot Ugh. of Batmans. A lot of Batmans. <laughs> yes. Okay, well, that's good. You, Batman. You, I, Batman. Batman. Right. One might say. A horde of Batman. I, I think that. I saw a lot of ladies who forgot their pants, which I gotta go, what are they? I forgot my pants earlier. Mike helped me out there. Well, well I'm glad you are all wearing pants, pants here. Yeah, I, I appreciate you very all serious. dressing up for this. Uh, you're all very well dressed, actually. This is uh, this is great. I appreciate the effort. Thank so, you. Thank you for joining us. Um, I am so fascinated about Project Book, Blue Book because I love some good conspiracy theories and UFOs. Stuff. But I would love to know um, just a little bit about what the show will walk us through in its first season. So whoever wants to take us through Chief, that. Chief, take it away. Um, okay, well... No pressure. Make it good. In its first season... Right to the point. So let's be, keep it specific to the first season because, you know, there is a larger arc and mm -hmm. we go further. Uh, Project Blue Book is a dramatization, if you like, of a period in American history, the U.S. Air Force's investigation into um, what are now known as unidentified flying objects. Uh, there was a UFA space, like a massive... And that phrase was coined by his character on the show. Oh, wow. How cool is that? Yeah, and Hynek also came up with the, the close encounter terminology. Uh, I play this character, J. Allen Hynek, who was mm -hmm. an astrophysicist college professor who was brought in to be the uh, public face of Project Blue Book and to dispel these myths and debunk and demystify and quell the hysteria. And uh, So he's very much the skeptic. Well, he's, yeah, this. I mean, Hynek started out as a skeptic, but um, he didn't finish off as a skeptic, you okay. know, but... Uh, but the Project Blue Book ran for um, 17 years, mm -hmm. you know, and we're just covering the first year. Um, so far. So, so far. this could be running so for far. 17 years then, There's theoretically. So many with <laughs> we won't be alive, I don't think, for 17 <laughs> years. <laughs> but I mean, all, all our, all our storylines are based on actual reports that yeah. people have filed. You know, some <laughs> stories which will be familiar to an audience, you know, the, some, of the, some of them, you know, are based on things like the... Lubbock Lights, or the uh, oh. the couple who were abducted. Uh, right. Yeah, so basically every episode's title is of a case file. So when wow. people see the episodes, they can look into the backstory about the actual. That's cases. really cool because I, when whenever I see shows like this that go into something, you know, that was part of our history, it's so much fun to actually then go and do that deep dive outside of the show. So do you hope your fans then go and do that research? Uh, yeah, well, I, I think you know so many people thus far have said you know. This is kind of X Files in the fifties, yeah. and it kind of is. But the eye candy of the fifties period—the clothes, yeah. the cars, the look of the show—is really, truly amazing. And then to have great storylines, yeah, in, in fact-based, true storylines, okay. which are scary as heck. Uh, and well, this is noir it. It's very, it's noir. very noir. It's very yeah. dark. You know the way yeah. it's shot and all the look of the whole thing. Is, yeah, it's not campy at all. And okay. it's very much a relationship it conspiracy looks, drama. As, as much it looks as the rest. really interesting from like the first looks that we were able to get in Entertainment Weekly. So I think, I think it's going to be really fascinating to see that time period captured. How do you feel though that this resonates today? Given well, the parallels are insane. On. I mean, you know, the whole thing with Russia, the mm -hmm. threat of nuclear war, and all that, and fake news. You know, this whole thing. I've heard fake about news. some fake news. Yeah. Yeah, we we've yeah. all heard about fake news. I don't know if that's real or not, but <laughs> apparently that's the thing. Um, but yeah, but I mean, Blue Book was very much a fake news thing. Mm -hmm. You know, it was coined by by the Air Force, and they were trying to. Um, dispel these myths that were going on and uh, attribute, attribute them to natural phenomena, meteors, mm -hmm. etc., and doing everything they could to convince the public that there was nothing else going on that we don't know. And that's what we bring right. on the astrophysicists to help debunk a lot of those And yeah. it's not like your normal, like guy who was a flying saucer fanatic at the time, right? Like a hick a from point. the fringes yeah, of society. Right. He was a very educated man who right. brought a lot of validity to the And subject. science to it, and so yeah. For, for my character, who's the general of, you know, the force star general of the Air Force, I hire Michael's character to find someone who can 
make sure the public doesn't hear about the fact that there are UFOs and there are these other things out there. So we hire him thinking this is the perfect fit. Right. He's, he's so smart. He's got all the credits. You know, yeah. he'll, he'll make, sh make sure the public doesn't find out about UFOs. But then, of course, yeah. he realizes, well, this is not the right thing to be saying. Okay. Yeah, and as far as just to get back to, you know, the question of how this resonates with now, I mean, there's always, there always has been and there always will be a fascination with what is out there, mm -hmm. you know, in a potentially infinite universe. Yeah. You know, there's obviously, you know, <laughs> since the beginning of time, since people could, you know, walk and think for themselves, they've been kind of looking up and wondering what, you know. What's in what's, the sky? What's Pyramid, there? Stonehenge, you know, yeah. like so many unexplained and, things. Yeah. <clears throat> so it's a timeless uh, topic. Yeah. Um, Aiden, it's really great to see you back after that uh, fairly massive season finale of Game of Thrones. I feel like, uh, have you come to terms with what happened to Peter Baelish? Yeah, I mean, that's yeah, somebody else, you know what I mean? Through. Yeah, well, that was a while ago. Um, that's true. I, I just walk away from those things and don't think about them ever again. Oh, that's good, because I'm still thinking about that <laughs> scene. Great. Uh, it stuck with me. Um, it was really good to see you back. This is a very different character to Peter Baelish, obviously. Um, what did you like about playing Heineck, um, and what do you think people connect to in him? Uh, well, just, you know, to relate it to Baelish, for example, which I have been <laughs> playing for a while. Uh, it's been it's been re really nice and something that I've uh, gone after to mm -hmm. play a character who's warm and thoughtful and uh, not self-serving, you know, okay. and genuinely humble. Um, there, there are there are uh, similar attributes, like mm -hmm. in, you know, uh, they're both quite intelligent and um, or uh, highly intelligent and able to get what they want, I guess, in a way. Um, but it's a, it's quite a, you know, it's the polar opposite, really, in yeah. terms of personality. So that's been, it's more like what I'm like, really. Ah, you're getting the nice guy out of you, finally. Um, <laughs> um, have you uh, have you guys been, like, bothering Aiden at all for any Game of Thrones finale secrets? Have you found out anything at all, or...? Any Game of Thrones prodding here? I'm just scared to watch him like that, playing his <laughs> wife, right? Like, I don't want true. to really associate him with Littlefinger at all. Yeah, you'd rather have him as high neck. That's, That's been true. my tactic throughout the show, just avoiding that. Yeah. She's, the one, she's the one who's got all the intrigue going on in this show anyway. It's not me. <laughs> I, What's going I, on I can't with wait to see that play There's out. some fun adventures with Ksenia Solo, my character and her. Like, we have a great little friendship, Susie and Mimi, so you'll have to stay tuned. That's Absolutely. great, and the costuming and the look of everything. Everything's incredible. Like these girls, they put those outfits on. It's like boom Everyone in the fifties. Everyone looks so much better in the fifties. Well, you guys too. Every yeah, yeah, we're all right. We're all right. <laughs> not as good as the girls. No, <laughs> but we do our best. Well, I'm, I can't wait to, to see the show. It just sounds really fascinating, especially for people like me who are just obsessed with like sci-fi and conspiracy theories. Um, so thank you so much for joining thank you. us. I look forward to uh, hearing more about the show as we continue. Thank you, thank you very, very much. much.